Perfect. Now, firstly, Rachel, thank you so much for giving us your time today. Pleasure. Um, I firstly wanted to ask you just when you first started out, it mm -hmm. was at the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. Well, when I first started out, yeah. it was the Loft Theatre in Court, okay. where Neil Trevine started, yes. and Joe Lynch, and all of them. Yeah. Um, and then on the boards, mm. um, I took the boards for a good few years, and then I headed off to New York when I was 19. That's right, yeah. Yeah, and that was to the American Academy of Dramatic Arts in New York City. And then I graduated, and I came back, and I did shows again, the theatre. Yes. Even though what I trained in was the Meisner technique. That's right, yeah. yeah. The foundation was mm. Meisner. And there was very little camera work, but the Meisner technique lends itself to camera. Exactly. So, um, yeah, I came back and I kind of got RTE fairly swiftly. I did a show where I was naked, The Elephant Man. And if <laughs> I had known it was going to catapult me so fast, I'd have done it years ago. <laughs> um, and I went and I, I started working with the BBC in Belfast. Yes. Then uh, agents started to call. Perfect. And, then and did you find from your studies in New York that uh, when you came back to Ireland, that technique, was it still in its early stages over here with other actors? Or did you there was no technique. Did? Right, okay. People didn't have technique. Because in my day, you went to amateur dramatic societies mm -hmm. and that's where you learned your craft, but it's also where you picked up all these bad habits. Okay. So when I came back, I went back to the loft, which mm -hmm. is Shakespeare, it's all Shakespeare. Yes. Went back to the loft and I was able to um, incorporate the technique that I had learned mm. and put it to practical use. And you, you have to find out, because you, you know, you learn lots of things with different teachers, but you only take what works for you. Okay. You don't take everything. Yeah. So I, I took the things that worked for me and I implemented them into characters that I was playing and into different shows. And through that, I found my own technique. Okay. But it was grounded in Chekhov and Meisner. Perfect. And was there any one character that stands out to you that really enveloped all that technique and really pushed you forward as a, as a performer and as a... As I think Blanche Dubois is to her name Desire because yeah. she's the Hamlet. But also Lady Macbeth, both of them. But Blanche probably, um, because she's, she's, the, she's, she's Tennessee Williams, she's the entire yes. show and she goes through, she's the, she's so layered as a character. I was able to do an awful lot of work with her. And, um, but both of them, um, both of them were, were after the American Academy, so I was able to implement. Because otherwise you, you don't really know what you're doing mm. um, and you're hoping for the best and that's not good enough. It's okay with stage because it's a one take wonder. Mm -hmm. But when you go to, um, to film or TV, as Pork would know, it's it, there could be a boom shadow, mm. and you have to do it again, yeah. or or the the cloud comes over and it, the, the the light is wrong. So you have to be able to keep doing it again and again and again, just as good. And obviously, we're here now uh, within your own academy. This is the Irish Film Academy. Yes, yeah. and it was first established in two thousand and six, and yeah. it's basically been going from strength to strength, really. Hasn't it, it is, been? and we don't we don't advertise. I think I well, I mean, I advertise on Google. I think I spend a thousand a year in advertising, no more. Um, it's all word of mouth, mm. and for me here, um, the teachers. I think I think I think our edge here is that you have to work in the industry at a high level to teach for me, okay. um, and it's not it's not clinical. Bork is a past pupil. Bork would know. <laughs> it's not clinical here. Like the the filmmaking group finished weeks ago, but they're still here editing, yeah. um, and it's a home away from home. Okay. Like I'm in now. It's now 4.20. I'd usually come in around 3 though. But, and I come in purely because the students will pop in and out. Okay. And class then begins at 6. Yeah, so it's, it's a home away from home. It's, it's, I wanted a place where people could come here and they could uh, find their own individual creativity okay. without having it pushed on them. And they could try new things. And even the students even now edit, the acting students edit, okay. and they actually film stuff themselves as well. I let them take the cameras and head off. So the pupils basically have uh, an all-round feel of what yeah. they're producing, creating, making. It's not just they have so a structured yeah. course that they do, yeah. but then outside of the structured course, they do lots of other different things. So yeah. they do lots. Yeah, they're all starting to come in now. But it's all oh, it, it kind of. I kind of go with the flow. Once the structured course is seen to, and once their classes are done, I have no problem coming in on a Sunday and shooting on location. Perfect. Free gratitude, no problem. And your time in the States, I know, I know you also studied at the New York Film Academy as well. Did you have a I did that for research for yeah. here, and I stole their head of education, David Pope, uh, who's fantastic. He's now head of the New Producers Alliance over there. 
um, was just over here and is doing a writer's course for me soon. Okay. But that was for research really. Mm -hmm. And I thought what they were doing was um, great, mm. but it wasn't challenging enough. I mean, so much so I went shopping in Covent Garden and I was doing a filming course. I mean, I'd never done filmmaking. So I, um, I took what they were doing. I did a four week intensive, which would be a 12 week evening that we do here. Yeah. And all you do is a music video. Whereas for us, you do a music video and a short film. Okay. So it's very practical, but I enjoyed it. Yeah. But the problem for me with New York Film Academy was that a lot of students were teaching. Uh, yeah, okay. so when you pass the course, you could always come back and, um, whereas here we have feature, uh, feature filmmakers. Graham yeah. Cantor flies over from London, we have Jason Figgis, David Keating, um, who will tell you he won't do anything for under a million, <laughs> but he's fantastic. He did Wakewood not so long ago. Um, but all of them are so talented, that's the filmmaking, all so talented. Um, yeah, and the, our computers are up to date. Yeah, so all of those sort of things um, have to keep ticking over. Mm. That, that's that's our main edge is teachers and equipment. And when you're looking for a teacher, obviously apart mm, from them being established, what yeah. is it that draws you in? What what it's, well, the filmmaking do you want? is easy because the filmmaking I just go for the best directors that are out there. That's yeah. fine. And most um, people um, in the industry want to pass on their knowledge, um, so that's fine. But when it comes to the acting, that's tough. Yeah. Um, writers make wonderful teachers because they understand character. Mm. Um, and you see, not everybody who works in the industry can teach it. Yeah. Because a lot of people who work in it don't have technique. They did what I told you I did. Mm. So, well, what I started doing in the Amateur Dramatic Society. Mm. But so very few went away to train. So it's tough to get that. So you try and get the mix. We have an IFA down in Cork now, and that only runs weekends. Yeah. So we have an improv teacher from Scratch Saturday. Okay. We have me going down for shooting, and then I have a director who teaches the acting because he's also an actor and he's American. So he you know, understands, he's, he studied, he understands technique. Yeah. So there's loads, there's loads of them. I'm gonna let them in. Come on in. Um, so it's, it's tough. It's tough to find the, the acting teachers, yeah. um, but if they're out there, I have them. Perfect. Yeah. And how, did you find because I know this is your solo project that you invested basically everything. This is yours. You didn't take any really outside. Oh gosh, no, anything. no. So this no, is no. totally your, your yeah. well second baby, I guess. Totally. <laughs> I have my real baby up there. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, with, yeah. How did you find, therefore, setting up this academy with all the other, I suppose, the competition that was around? Did you feel that? I didn't think about it. No. I mean, the competition that's out there isn't competition. No. So their acting classes involve playing games. I don't play games. Um, there's too much to do. So it's. Um, I knew what I was doing was going to to work. Yeah. But I couldn't believe that nobody had had done this. Yeah. I called my programmer. It's a true story. I called my program at seven o'clock in the morning. Go back to New York Film Academy, and I was thinking I was going to do this. I was I was researching lots of different courses, and I called Jonathan. And I said, Jonathan, quickly check and see if the Irish Film Academy dot com is gone. He's a programmer. Mm -hmm. Does all this stuff, and he got back to me. He said it's not. And I said, dot IE? No. Dot EU? No, nothing. I said, buy it. Buy it straight away. I couldn't believe that nobody had, had thought about the Irish Film Academy. Mm. Yeah. It's mad. I mean, I'd love to go huge with, with, the, with the school, and the acting is a huge thing for me, I suppose, um, but, um, because I think Ireland needs one, and they don't need one that has all these patrons that will never be in it. They need one that has really good teachers who work in the industry, not who did a lambda exam or maybe did a commercial and then call themselves an acting <laughs> teacher. Yeah. And this is my problem with a lot of a lot of schools. Yeah. Um, and they're also I have a problem I think it's great to learn a bit of theatre, but I have a problem um, with with a lot of things. I have a problem with charging people for auditions to get into schools. Yes. I have a problem with that. I have a problem with teachers who are not teachers. I have a problem um, I have a bit of a problem with with these long courses for theatre because you're training people to be unemployed because there's no work mm. so you're promising them a lot of stuff but when it because if i was to take a theatre student and put them on a set i couldn't i'd have to train them on the set and uh, we don't have time yeah. it's too expensive yeah. so you're training them for something i can't use because i have trainedactress.com yes an online casting site but i can't take i can't take them on board and sell them because 
they don't know what a camera is. They don't know how to react in front of a camera. They probably freeze. Mm. They don't know how to use their camera. Well, they are two completely different mediums. Totally different techniques as well, yeah. So yeah. So the your academy basically is giving uh, a talented, an already talented actor the tools basically to... Oh no, to I have people coming in here are 60 years of age who've never, never done acting in their lives and just want to start something because the kids, they got married young and they've got carried away the career and they just want to give it a whirl. I have other people who come in who really want to be actors all of them, no matter what they've done, if they've done nothing, I have a lot of people who've done nothing coming in here, or they've done courses, I can be guaranteed none of them have done the Meisner technique. Okay. So they'll all still start at the same level. But I have one just got um, a good part on Love Hate. That's See? correct, yeah. I have another one who, Jack was age four, he's in the Heineken. I have another one, Kieran was in Raw. I have another client of mine who was my foster child actually in Fair City. <laughs> She's 24 playing a 16 year old. So they get work. Yes. Yeah, and that's my goal. To train them up and then if they want to get into the industry and they want to work in the industry, then to get them out there. And therefore, yeah. as a byproduct of your academy, I see trainedactors.com as well. So. Which is free to get on. Oh, it's actually it's free. free. Yeah, it's free to get on. It's free to get on if you don't have an agent. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay, and how has that, uh, has it been successful in, in that Yeah, it's, a, it's great for me because I know the casting directors. So it's great um, and they come in here and do some drop-in classes and there's only really, I suppose, four major players here. Mm -hmm. And they're all lovely. The people who are high in the industry are usually salt of the earth. It's the people that aren't have the egos. And, um, and they'll, they'll just email and they'll always keep us in mind because they know there's new talent coming yeah. up and you never know, you just never know who walks, I had a girl who walked in the door, she was terribly shy because you have to have an interview before you get into the school, yeah. and which we don't charge for. And she, <laughs> she came in and she sat there and I thought, oh my gosh, she just lost her job, She's, she was very intimidated and um, she just seemed so shy and I thought it's going to be an uphill battle now with her, but she really wanted it. Yeah. So started last night and mother of God, she's amazing. I could put it to work now. Perfect. So her personal persona is totally different from yeah. her acting. She absolutely knows what she's doing. Um, so, and I, I don't want to polish her too much. You don't want, you want to keep them, um, the actors, you want to just kind of a little bit. You don't want to train them too much mm. because then they lose their spontaneity. And what's, yeah. the, what's the future then for the Well, we're looking at mm -hmm. New York. We're looking at Manhattan. So, um, and that's been in the pipeline for a year. So, but I'm also looking at Cape Town. Oh, really? Yeah, because I'm half South African. Ah, okay. So, um, and I don't know which will come first, to be honest. Um, so it depends on my little one over there. <laughs> but New York, I know, because I lived there for so long. Yeah. Um, but Cape Town would be a really good one for us here. Because I think that the Irish Film Academy has something very unique and it's the students really and I'm not being cliche here it really is the students that um, that kind of make this school unique yeah. because they never leave right. they're always they always come back like or they'll call me I had one of my students call me crying the other day on the phone because her agent was rude to her so you know, we got rid of him and we moved her to somebody else you know yeah but um, then they always feel that they can call here and Karen's been with me for as long as the company's really been here. So it's, um, yeah, I think that it is something unique and I, I think it, it would work. And therefore, as, a, as an ethos, I suppose, you give yourself as well to the students. It's not very much that I you know found the students. academy and then that's it, you just take a step oh, back. God, You're no. very hands-on. Oh, I know all my students. Um, and all I also noticed that you have, as a, one of your quotes is, negativity is not an option. It isn't. I mean, it really isn't. Yeah. You know, I think that's just in life. Yeah. Um, it's not. I mean, if I was to have listened to people, you know, going into the business, because I remortgaged the house. I remember I got, um, and I remember I was like 20, I think I was 20 grand shy, because there's a lot of equipment we had to buy first day. Yeah. I say we, it was me. But, um, <laughs> and I thought, fuck. And I remember washing, I was hanging out the washing in the back garden, and I called my partner, Cormac, and I said, I said, fuck. I said, we're 20 grand short. And I said, I'll get a car loan. He said, you can't do that. I said, I'll get a car loan. 
So I called up. I don't know how I got the chassis number of a car because you need that. Um, but I got, I can say it now because literally we just paid off that loan a couple of months ago. In full. <laughs> so um, I can say it now. Besides, I don't care what the bank says to me anymore. <laughs> but yeah, we got the car loan. And the car loan on top of what I had mortgaged out for the house. And that paid for the building for the first year, all the equipment and advertising for the first year, which was a lot. Mm. Um, anybody starting up a business, be careful with your advertising costs. It nearly put me under. Um, but yeah, so it, it was it was going to work and that was it. I wasn't listening to outside uh, negativity on it. Okay. Yeah, you have to be very single-minded. I think in the business you have to be very single-minded. So if I was to listen to people saying, oh my God, acting is such a difficult career, you'll never make it and you're wasting your life, you know, you're just, you know, don't want to get out there and get a job. I never... I wouldn't be here, yeah. I wouldn't have a successful TV career, and I wouldn't be maybe opening up abroad. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. You don't listen to people, you Perfect. listen to yourself. And so therefore, any final, I suppose, words of uh, wisdom from um, such a tenacious lady as yourself? Gosh, she's so complimentary. <laughs> um, I was just thinking, I was talking to the hairdresser this morning, and I was saying to Kevin, I was watching Nuna Ofwe Lawn's documentary the other night, and Marvellous Lady. And I was thinking to myself, you know, she really um, only understood what life was about when it was too late. Mm. So it's not a rehearsal, it's, uh, it's one time you go around, so you should just do it all. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for your time. Pleasure. It's been a wonderful interview and we will let you get back to your, to your hectic schedule.